we've known each other for many years. And I kind of remember when I first, mm -hmm. first met you, you may have told me a little bit about some of your first experiences with Sri Chinmoy. But, uh, so perhaps you could remind me, because I know mm -hmm. there was a, the story impacted you very deeply. Yeah, well, it was quite remarkable. Um, about a year and a half before I first saw Sri Chinmoy, um, unexpectedly, I had a very powerful spiritual experience. I was in a place where many people were praying and swaying and crying and I, it was a place of prayer and I was um, really kind of like a proud agnostic. I didn't really know if I believed oh, in God or not. <laughs> I, um, but I thought maybe I should say a prayer and I remember saying to myself, God, if you exist, saying to God, God, if you exist, uh, please bless my parents, bless the world. I mean, I hadn't seen my parents for several months, and, and I had an extremely powerful experience, unsought, unexpected, and I almost took my breath away. It was so, like, at that time, I felt, I, I always, after that, definitely God exists. It totally changed the direction of my life. Whereas before it was kind of do unto others philosophy, and then it was like, definitely God exists. Mm -hmm. Try to know God's will and try to do it. And that was, mm -hmm. it just opened up everything after that. And then in a flash, how life can change. Mm -hmm. So then I, um, lots of things happened. A year and a half, fast forward, went to the university, and um, I became a vegetarian in where I was living. And uh, I was passing by a health food store, which was owned by a disciple of Sri Chinmoy. And so I went into her store and I saw a paper on the wall, a handout, and mm -hmm. said, what is the meaning of life? And I'd been really seeking at that point, and I, like you, I'd been studying a lot of different philosophies and searching. And in one sentence, it just, you know, it just... Totally, I can't remember exactly what that sentence is right now, but it was very, I um, wish I could find it. Anyway, uh, it, was, it, said, it said, you know, it was one of Shu Chinwai's talks from Everest Aspiration book, and it, it totally sunk deep inside me. I said, this is so simple, it's so true, it's so pure, and so high, and I, I want to know more about this. So I went to meditation classes, and one thing after another, I um, I said, I'm not sure, because I never really considered having a spiritual teacher before. <laughs> and then it sort of scared me a little bit, to be honest, but I wasn't, like it's not by it wasn't in my background. And then um, I heard he was going to the University of Vermont, this was back in 1980. <laughs> and so I said, well, I'm, I'm going to see, if she's there, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really focus. So I went there, and I remember some people were quite reverent, and I was like, I didn't feel that uncomfortable with them, and I saw some people like this, and I was like, have respect. And then I realized, you know what? I really need to have blinders. When we're approaching spiritual life, and you know, a teacher, you know, we really have, I felt, you know, I had to disregard what other people mm -hmm. did, felt, and just really have blinders, and just have, you know, I had to have my own experience with Sri Chinmoy, so I just did that, and it was beautiful. It was peaceful and magnificent. And then afterwards, there is a tradition, as you know, to give, it's called prasad. After mm -hmm. one meditates with a spiritual master, yes. the prasad is given, and it's, um, I didn't know anything about it, but Sri Chinmoy was giving out oranges, mm -hmm. and so I was thinking, that's yeah, very generous. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I went up, got the orange, and when I took the orange, I got the very same experience I had about a year and a half before, which completely, it wasn't a little, it was unbelievable. Connected these two experiences. Oh, completely. I felt that it, it was actually Sri Chinmoy, he knew everything about me. It was very clear that that experience happened, and I felt that he was bringing it forward mm -hmm. from the depths that the soul, really. Mm -hmm. So then... There was still a part of me that was like, this is too good to be true. The mind is so, you know, strong and fixed in our, you know, 
fears and things. And I was like, Look, how, how could this be possible? It's like, what don't I know? What do I have to, you know? You know, it was really crazy. So then I, in that, they were having a meal for visitors in the hallway, mm -hmm. we were visitors, and so um, he passed by. There were a few of us outside, and he passed by, and in a flash, in a millisecond, he looked at me, and he took away all that fear, and mm -hmm. I felt like it was like a net meshing, that it was like such a oneness, it so, mm -hmm. felt his goodness, his purity, and then it was done. I said, I have to try this. If I don't try this, I'm going to this fall. <laughs> um, so that's, that's how I did. And never look back in the greatest friend. <laughs>